started building the scaffolding that cantilevered out and interconnected from that point up. So it was not only the genius of how to build the wall self-supporting so you didn't need centering for supports, it was also figuring out a scaffolding method for the workmen to be able to build the two shell walls of the dome. So it was multifold. And here we are in the church looking up at the dome. And you can see all these wonderful paintings as well. But look at how stark and clean looking the walls are. And that was one of the comments made in the video about the style of Gothic that was being developed in this church. The narrator called it a Gothic that was ripe for the Renaissance. And I think what he was trying to say there was that there was not a lot of frou-frou, if you will. There was not a lot of decoration. It was a very clean, straightforward, pure form of Gothic which Renaissance architecture is rather straightforward and pure. So this Gothic, too, was really pointing the way toward Renaissance architecture, even though it was Gothic. And of course, the paintings on the dome ceiling, which if you walk up there and you get real close to, are depicting the same old story, the end of the world. You know the story, the good news over here, the bad news over here, and all that. It gets pretty gruesome. Now, when you look up toward the oculus into the lantern area, look at the faux finish of the painting and the characteristics it takes on. Again, painting that was developed in style during the Renaissance, which increased through the Renaissance in quality, just like cell phones did. Why? Because Competition was the engine driving the demand. So look at these architectural elements that we see. That's all paint. That's not real architectural elements. And these people hanging their legs out and the perspective that you get and the actual realism of the painting is all renaissance. Okay, now, remember this building? This is the bathroom looked at that during the Romanesque period, because it is a Romanesque building. It sits in front of the Gothic Florence Cathedral. Well, there was a competition we learned in the video for the design and the construction of all the sets of doors around the perimeter of this bathroom. The significance of that is that it would have been a lifelong assignment to the winner of that competition. It would have involved enough time, enough work, it would have been a lifelong assignment. It would have been, you have done made it if you won that competition. And Brunelleschi was one of the competitors to get the commission to do the bronze doors for the bathroom. He lost. So it was one of those, oh shucks, I lost that competition. I guess I'm just going to have to be the father of the Renaissance. Ha ha ha. Okay, so we saw these images in the video as well. And they were the sample design entries by both Brunelleschi and De Verdi. And of course, the scene was a biblical scene, Abraham his son Isaac. And I know none of you all have kids, I don't think. But if you do have kids, you would never think about killing one of your kids, at least until they got to be 17 years old. Then you might want to kill them. But the idea of, of God coming to you, <coughs> as he did Isaac, and say, well, you know, I mean Abraham said, you know what? I want you to kill your son. Really? And this is God telling you this. So <coughs> you can imagine that Abraham would have been a little conflicted about that. But ultimately, 
Ultimately, he chose to obey God, and he was in the act. He was making the stroke, and the angel intervened <coughs> because it was a test. Abraham didn't know it was a test. Well, if you recall from the video, Brunelleschi, in his solution, emphasized the brutality of the act. So it was this gruesome, gory, horrible thing. Whereas Ghiberti, who won the competition, used his knowledge of studies of classical sculpture. So we have this Isaac portrayed as Apollo and this beautiful figured body. So all of this very nice classical Greco-Roman in detail, but the interjection of a grace, which the video called Gothic grace. So it was a combination. But what Brunelleschi learned was, there's a reason why I lost that competition. I need to find out more about classicism. So as a result, he did. And he traveled to Rome, and he studied ancient ruins and monuments and buildings and really began to build his vocabulary, he kind of went to architecture school, if you will. Okay, so here we have two juxtaposed images, which I like to also use. The painting on the right by a fellow named Masaccio, which is also located in a church called Santa Maria Novella in Florence, is on the right. And on the left is a sketch showing the organization of a one-point perspective. And the reason the two are seen together here is to emphasize and illustrate that idea of the virtual reality that this new technology was creating for the worshipers. Because from the perspective of this painting, Here's the altar, and in the church, in the side altar where this is, the worshiper would have been kneeling in front, right here. And so the fixed perspective of all the architectural elements, the crucifix, the people, everything, literally put that worshiper at the foot of the cross. And when he looked up, it was as if he was there. So this powerful technology, this virtual reality, included the architecture as well. I mean, I doubt that there was this nice coffered barrel vaulted ceiling at Mount Cal Calvary when Christ was crucified. I don't think it was quite that nice. So building the architecture into it was also very René Sansons. Now, this image shows the entry or the facade of the Ospedale Innocenti. Now, this is the first building that Brunelleschi did full-blown Renaissance style. And when we look at it, we see images of that cloister again. We see rather slender-looking columns supporting very light and springy arches in an arcade across the facade. We also see the very rigid and orderly placement of windows above the pediment. We also see very specific locations of these wonderful roundel reliefs that were done by an artist named Rabio during that period as well. So everything has its specific place. If any of it was out of order, we would notice immediately. And again, remember the last time anybody used arches and columns together like this was the Romanesque. So it would have been much heavier, much thicker, much more weight. So there's a lightness to this style as well. And you know what? This is as far as we got in the first class. So we will continue on Thursday with the Ospedale Innocenti, and probably finish up the early Renaissance, maybe get into the
high renaissance. That's when they got the good stuff going. Okay, so <clears throat> shield your eyes. Unless there are questions. Um, your other class starts at two, right? Yes, ma'am. Two o'clock. Yeah. <laughs>